Thank you, Sai, and thank all of you for coming, and uh, thank the rain gods for going somewhere else for a little while. So hopefully that holds out. And uh, I just really want to thank you for turning out today. It's, it's amazing, uh, a sense of community here and community around the world. Cindy and I have been getting emails from people around the world and, uh, and people that are doing things and, and standing for justice in one way or another, and I, I'm uh, grateful for that. Uh, I've been asked to talk for just a few minutes, and I should look at my watch here to make sure that that's the way it comes down, uh, about our search for justice for Rachel. And I would say that the first thing that we learned, the first thing we thought of is essentially is not about Rachel. Uh, it's about the people in Gaza, it's around, and you can pick Gaza, you can pick the West Bank, that's where Rachel was working the last few months of her life, but a lot of you work in other parts of the world, South America, Central America, and you, unfortunately, you can pick a whole lot of places in the world, Africa certainly, where this sort of peace and justice work, the work for economic justice, for political justice, for legal justice, needs to go on, and I'm grateful to be a part of that, and I'm grateful for all of you that are a part of that, and thinking about what it takes to be a community, what it takes to come together, and the energy that we have on each of these topics, and how they interleak, and while our voice may not be on just one of those, topics for the most part, we do understand that they're all linked together. We understand that we have to then link together and work on it, and we understand that as Americans, we are very much responsible for a lot of what's, instead of being right with the world, what's wrong with the world. And I think when I came to this, you know, I was basically drafted. If you, if you look closely at me, you're going to see that I'm an old white guy. And uh, I come from a background in corporate America. And uh, when Rachel was killed, one of the things we did very early on is go to the Congress, to the State Department, eventually to the Department of Justice, eventually to the White House. And while we met a lot of caring people, and a lot of people who individually were trying to do what they could for us, their institutions were doing very little. Because, you see, we were sort of on the wrong side of their perception of what was politically polite on that issue. And that was a real wake-up call to me. I really thought from my background, you know, a grandfather was a good attorney, several uncles are great attorneys, and I just figured if you knew a little bit about the ropes and how to handle yourself, you could get through that. Wrong. We are getting through that. And we're going, I'll tell you a little bit about that, and check my watch once more, because time's flying by, so I gotta go quickly. But it is the position. We went to, uh, to Washington, D.C. to be with our son, really, right after, within hours after Rachel was killed. It was the position of the United States, first of all, that President Bush was promised, the thorough, credible, transparent investigation. He, that promise was made by Prime Minister Sharon the day after Rachel was killed. And it is still the position of the United States government that that's never happened. Now, we've had a lot of pressure. You can go out to our website if you want to read about that, and I think one of the best articles to read on the website is the topmost one in the articles that were written about the trial, and it's, it's, it's well done there, and you can go through that. We've had a lot of support and a lot of work on that, but at the end of the day, as I sometimes tell uh, people in the State Department, they're asking us, as a family, even though they may get us into, into Israel to do a lawsuit, they may get us here, they may get us there. But at the end of the day, they're asking us as a family to try and enforce the promise that was given from one head of state to another. And we can't do that. We can't possibly do that. But we're going to give it a try. So, you know, we will... So we did bring a lawsuit in Israel, and as most of you know, the judge essentially rejected that. He said that Israel, as, as an, killed Rachel, is an act of war, and as an act of war, nobody can legally criticize him for that. Now, that's against all sorts of international law, and our attorney announced to the world, before he announced to us, actually, that we're going to appeal. And we, are, we have filed an appeal. That, uh, that will be heard on uh, February 14th of uh, next year. 
So we're going to go forward with this thing. But as you hear, we're going to go forward with that. See, I can't do that much about the government. I can go back to the government, and we will, and insist that they try to enforce that promise by head of state. I can go back to the government, and we will, and say, wait a minute, our government dollars were used to purchase the bulldozer that killed Rachel. That's illegal under U.S. law. You need to enforce U.S. law. And I think they need to respect international law. We can go back and we can do that. And you can too. You can help us do that. Because the only thing we can control is our own actions. And I know with this community around us and the support that we've had over the last 10 years, that as we look forward, we can do that. We can each figure out what it is that we can most work on and the place in the world that we can do that, which may be right here in Olympia. Lord knows we have enough homeless, we have enough work to do here, or maybe halfway around the world. But I think as a community, we can do that. We can do that with love for ourselves, for love for those people who uh, right now feel that they're our opponents. Maybe they even feel like they're our enemies. But I think we have to, because the one thing we do control is ourselves. So thank you.